Well, NASA has successfully launched its Artemis 1 rocket ship from Cape Canaveral in Florida. Oh, pretty spectacular, spectacular that stuff, isn't it? Joining us now is Australia's astronomer at large, Fred Watson. Fred, good to see you. What, what did you think of that launch? <laughs> well, Pete, you know me. I live my life in a state of um, constant excitement about space flight, and I've been doing that since 1957, and this is no different. It is a very, very exciting step forward, a major step, I guess, in human exploration of space. Even though there's nobody on board that spacecraft, it's paving the way for trips to the moon. So where will it be now? What will be happening? So uh, at the moment, it's, uh, well, about, you know, 15 hours out from its launch. It's on its way to the moon. The, 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 the launch sequence went flawlessly, actually, after some hiccups in the afternoon, uh, our time. The uh, spacecraft uh, didn't need to enter orbit around the Earth. It basically got up there into a, a, an Earth orbit that was terminated when it fired its rockets to head towards the moon, what's called the translunar injection. Uh, and that's the state it's in now. It's coasting to the moon. It'll be doing that for the next six days or so. By Monday, it will be uh, firing its rockets to put it into an orbit around the moon itself. OK, so just back everything up and for those who are just trying to refresh themselves with what this is all about, just explain it again, Fred. So what we've got here is a, basically a dry run, a, a, a dress rehearsal for the first crewed flight to the moon, uh, the first flight with humans on board. Uh, and that's why uh, there have been several delays with this launch, because NASA has wanted to get absolutely everything picture perfect. Uh, the whole thing has had to be a textbook ride just so that they can test all the details uh, of the spacecraft, of the mission, of what they're planning to do with it uh, before astronauts actually riding it and we hope that will happen next year sometime the artemis 2 mission will have astronauts on board and it will do essentially the same as artemis 1 is doing which is to orbit around the moon mm. uh, artemis 1's going into a very very big orbit around the moon and it will be there for almost three weeks so if we go back to the moon what more will we be hoping to learn what what's going to be different this time um, it's, it's now more about uh, trying to see whether the moon can be used as a staging post for further exploration within the solar system. Uh, and the, re the, the region of the moon's surface that's been chosen for exploration when astronauts finally land there, probably in 2025 or 2026, uh, they're going to the South Pole region, which we believe is rich in, um, among other things, water ice. Uh, and water whilst it's commonplace here on Earth, in space it is a very, very rare commodity because you can use it to make oxygen to breathe and also to make rocket fuel. Uh, you dissociate water into hydrogen and oxygen and you've got a supply of rocket fuel. So right. that's the target, yes. So, I mean, we, I mean we're get, getting further down the track here, but if it's used as a staging post, would it then be colonised? <laughs> I think that's the wrong word to use. Um, I think there might be a, a, a constant human presence and that, that might happen quite quickly. Um, it, it's never going to be a place where large numbers of, of Earth's inhabitants go. It's a very, very hostile environment. You've got to take your own atmosphere with you as well as everything else. Yeah. But but it makes a, a good, a, as I said, a good staging post for, for future exploration. So, I mean... How long, realistically, could someone stay there for on the moon? How much, what, do we have that information yet? Yeah, and if you've got the right habitation facilities and you, you talk about things like habitation modules rather than buildings, uh, then you could stay there on a quasi-permanent basis, if I can put it that way, hmm. um, because you need to be protected, of course, from the sun's radiation, from the subatomic particles that the sun emits, and from the, uh, the, the massive changes in temperature during the lunar day. It changes by about 300 degrees Celsius from minus something to plus something, very, very significant changes. You've got to protect uh, humans against all that but that is possible so when you say it could be used as a staging post are you then talking for onward journeys to i don't know mars or whatever yeah, that's that, that's certainly the uh, the mm. policy within NASA. Their Moon to Mars program is what this is all about. Mars is a much more difficult target. It's yeah. a lot further away, uh, and I think we'll be looking at the late 2030s before we're seeing uh, humans going to Mars. All right, pretty exciting stuff, though, Fred. Thank you very much, Pete. Yeah, we very much. So. We'll talk to you soon. As soon as we get any more updates from Artemis One, fantastic, Fred. We'll talk to you again soon.